Good evening everybody. I declare the meeting open and, an, and announce also that in accordance with our live streaming policy, any members of the public um, consent to having, having their image and uh, voices uh, published as part of our policy. Thank you. Um, and I call upon now Councillor Barry Winmar to present the Welcome to Country. Thank you, Worship. I begin by acknowledging my elders past and present in the land we meet on. It's the land of the Noongar people. This is Wajak Budja. Ngalak nyinin kurulong, kurung alak noich nijin nunga budja. Nunga mot jerpen nyinin nyang alak wabadok, nunga budja kurulong. From the beginning of time to the end, this is Nunga country. Nunga people have been graceful keepers of our nation for many, many years. Jinin kalajin jerpen nijawarn nunga budja ngala maa maa boda. Look, listen, understand and embrace all the elements of Nunga country. This is forever our home. Kaiwan Jungan Kot Jerp and Nijinunga Budja Dajliwang in Nunga Budja. Hello and welcome. My heart is happy as we're meeting here on Nunga Country tonight. Thank you, Councillor Winmar, and I'd also like to acknowledge that we meet here on the land of the Noongar people and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. I call upon Councillor Sherilyn Wood to read the dedication. May we, the elected members of the City of Kwanana, have the wisdom to consider all matters before us with due consideration, integrity and respect for the Council Chamber. May the decisions made be in good faith and always in the best interest of the greater Kwanana community that we serve. Thank you. We have no apologies or leave of absence. Uh, public question time. We have received um, a series of questions from Mr Liam Gobert um, from ITAWA Vice President, but I will ask to deal with those later in the item because they actually, uh, later on in the agenda, because they deal with the Kalini Arts Centre and ha very happy for um, the CEO to respond to, to those questions um, <coughs> at the time when we're dealing with that matter. We have nothing on item 6.1, 6.2, uh, 6.3, no deputations. Item 7 is a confirmation of minutes for the meeting held on the 14th of June. Uh, do we have a mover to those minutes? Move Councillor Rao, seconded uh, Councillor Winmar. Anybody wish to speak to those minutes? Not put it to the vote, all in favour? Against, carry. <coughs> Do we have any declarations of interest? Yes, thank you, Worship. I have uh, impartiality interest in item uh, 18.1. That's correct. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm a member of the JDAP that we're considering that item uh, in July when it comes before the panel. Thank you. And thank you. I similarly have an uh, impartiality interest in 18.1 as a member of the JDAP. Um, and in addition to that, the proponent is a member of the Kunana Industries Council, who are my husband's employer. Thank you. Item 9, request for leave of absence. I'd like to put in two requests just for a couple of days from the 13th to the 16th of July and from the 21st to the 23rd of July. They cover some weekends and there's nothing in the diaries at the moment, so hopefully there shouldn't be too much disruption, but I do have a, a very c capable Deputy Mayor if need be. Um, in relation... Sorry? Thank you. Um, yeah, the week of the 10th of July to the 16th. Oh, right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Would somebody like to move? They move Deputy Mayor, seconded Councillor S. Wood, all in favour? Against? Carried. Item 10, items brought forward for the convenience of those in the public gallery. This is where I'd like to... Um, discuss the questions in relation or actually bring forward an item which was to be urgent business but it's very important for um, the <coughs> order of the agenda that the item which was urgent business is dealt with under item 10 so I would like to uh, move that that be considered. I move that we accept that urgent business report. Thank you. Moved uh, Deputy Mayor, seconded Councillor Winmar. All in favour? Against carried. 
Uh, the item is the Kalini Arts Centre ceasing operations. Um, CEO, would you like to take us through this or are there any questions? Are there any questions of council? Uh, yes, Your Worship, just uh, one question. Uh, just in relation to the officer's recommendations, wondering if there should be point three that the city um, ceases the uh, the review process that um, the notice of motion was requesting, and I think there was a resolution to do so. Uh, so just wondering if that would be prudent that we actually do that, or otherwise we'd need to rescind that motion. Yes, I would have thought. Need to rescind it, so yes, that's correct. Yeah, so we can just do that. Yeah, yeah just yeah. include that. Yeah. Yeah. Review, cease the review of the art centre review. And the motion, so I'll leave, come up with some suitable words as per the notice of motion. Yeah, we just need the date. Is that what we're going with? Let's see if I can help you find it. Cease a review of the Kalini Art Centre is um, approved at the council meeting. Yep. We just put the date on. Um, the, that was approved at the council meeting on 26 April. April? April, 26 of April. <coughs> So uh, that was, sorry, are there any questions on this item? Thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, could the City talk to um, the kind of review or evaluation process that will be undertaken, I guess, as a consequence of the events that have un un unfolded that will, will then inform the roadmap that will be pre presented to councillors in a further council report? Um, Mr Fisher? Through the chair, um, yeah. So uh, at this point in time, we're we're currently negotiating with the staff regarding um, short-term employment contracts. So obviously, we can keep the centre open and operational. So um, at that point in time, we'll commence a review. So the, obviously, we've got a fair bit of work to do to to, to ensure that the the centre continues on. Um, a part of that review is probably having a chat to staff, having a chat to industry, having uh, have a discussion with other local governments about their sort of operational models. Um, and, 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 and how they deliver that type of service. So the, then that, that'll be discussed with the team there and then presented back, back to staff about how we, how we deliver that service in the future. Just a follow-up question on a point of clarity. Um, in the report it mentions that uh, the city will bring a further council report at the conclusion of this review to confirm the future operation model of the Kulini Arts Centre. That's the review that we're referring to, not the point three no. motion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, any, somebody like to move with the additional point three? Uh, move move Deputy Mayor, seconded uh, Councillor D. Wood. Deputy Mayor, do you wish to speak to the item? Uh, just briefly, Your Worship. Um, I know there has been some difficulties for some time with the, uh, the management committee of the Arts Centre. I was obviously appointed by a council in, I think it was October last year, uh, which... Um, uh, has, has led to uh, various things have occurred, uh, but ultimately the board came to the conclusion that uh, the, the, the management committee uh, could no longer operate from a point of view of uh, finances in that they believe that this, the, the centre is not financial um, or based on their current service model, which I guess ultimately the council will review that process. Um, but I, I would like to um, just acknowledge the, uh, the, the current board, the current departing board, Your Worship, um, <coughs> Mark Winchester, who's the uh, secretary, Jenny Friend, Diane Hoddy, Steve Krempen, um, uh, and John Lazara, and also longtime board member Lynn Wolfenden, who has been involved with the Arts Centre for a number of years. Um, it, it certainly will be uh, somewhat of a change that the uh, council takes back uh, operation of the uh, Arts Centre. And it, I guess at the moment, there's a bit of uh, the staff are a bit unsettled about what's, what's occurred because it obviously has been a fairly uh, rash decision from the board, I guess. Well, maybe not rash, but um, certainly came out of left field for uh, for most. Uh, so I guess ultimately I hope that we can um, 
we can get things back to normal uh, as quickly as possible, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor D. Wood. The only thing I'd add to that is to make sure that the staff uh, are kept informed of, uh, at all times. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak against the recommendation? I shall put it to the vote. Can I have this close, actually? Sorry? Can I just close, make a closing remark, if that's possible? And a disclosure? Um, <coughs> uh, standing order says you can close, your worship. Um, I I'd actually just like to... Disclosure of interest. <laughs> um, <laughs> None, as the council pointed. Um, I actually just like to uh, acknowledge publicly um, Gary Fisher, um, Doug Elkins, um, and also um, Sue Wiltshire, who uh, who came quite quickly to the Arts Centre yesterday when this all unfolded, uh, and came up with this solution fairly quickly. Your Worship. Thank you. You must have been reading my notes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry, sorry. I should put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. And just reiterate. Um, how quickly the team moved in quite a very stressful situation for the staff yesterday and were able to come up, which I think is a completely uh, common sense approach and a good outcome, but uh, it was certainly uh, had to think on, think on your feet and you, you did very well and I know that the, the staff involved were very grateful uh, for the support um, of the City of Kunana. So thank you for that. Now... Um, Bringing back to uh, three questions that we had provided by Mr Liam Gobert, JP, ITAWA Vice President, which is Independent Theatre Association of Western Australia. Happy to read those questions out now. Um, what can the city do to ensure the Clinney Arts Centre remains in operation and that current programming in-house community theatre performances are able to continue? The city only became aware of the Clinney Arts Centre Incorporated wished to wind up as an organisation on Tuesday the 27th of June 2023 as part of winding up of the Clinney Board we, con we considered we were considering cancelling all bookings and transferring community hires to city facilities. Uh, this was a significant concern for the city of and as a result, the city has agreed to undertake operations for the centre as from Saturday the 1st of July. So therefore, it'll be basically a seamless process um, and the city will take over operations as from 1 July. Question two. Venue managers in past have created invaluable opportunities for a community theatre in WA through in-house productions and in support of other WA community theatre clubs. With the current uncertainty regarding the general manager and operations administrator, can the city ensure that these important staff members or at the very least their positions will be retained to ensure the ongoing delivery of high value theatre for the Kunana community? In the responses, the city has the intent of offering all staff at the Clinney Arts Centre short term employment contracts to continue operating the centre with the city uh, while the city conducts an operation review. Question three. The Independent Theatre Association implores the city to find a solution that ensures the Collinear Arts Centre venue remains open. Should the city resume control of the operations and management, can the city affirm a commitment to the support in-house not-for-profit community theatre production, as well as touring not-for-profit community theatre productions that, operation, that operate alongside any for-profit commercial productions? Uh, the city has a strong commitment to arts and culture and supporting community theatre performances. The actions of the past two days and tonight's city uh, council resolution is testament of the city's commitment to those aims and keeping the Clinney Arts Centre open for the community use. So I thank Mr Gobert for those, uh, those questions and hopefully he'll be satisfied with the city's response. Thank you. Just working off two agendas here, won't be a moment. Okay. Right, there's nothing on item 11, 12 or 13. Item 14 is the annual review of the Council Delegation's Register of Delegated Authority for 2023-24. Are there any questions of Council, or the CEO or the officers? Thank you. Um, I'd like to do, uh, have this deferred. Um, 
Sorry. If it can't be deferred, I'd like all local development plans to come to council. Thank you. So sorry you're asking, so we've, we're not, this is a question time, but you're foreshadowing that you're going to ask for this item to be deferred. Thank you. Are there, um, are there any other questions? If not, well, we, there is a recommendation. So Councillor Wood, you are foreshadowing, you are seeking for this item to be deferred. Seeking for the, uh, the item to be deferred as, because it's just for, there was too much stuff in there to read. And it, was, it was just too complicated as far as I was concerned. And if uh, it can't be deferred, all local development plans must come to council. So there's two matters there. Yep. One is if we ask for it to be deferred, do we have a seconder? Thank you. Um, I might just ask the CEO uh, if there was any comment or any any detriment in deferring this item. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> so this report really is just um, doing some minor changes to the current delegations which are in place um, to align them with the Walga uh, model templates for delegations. Um, there's no other changes to the delegations. Um, just in terms of the, the point that was raised in terms of um, removing um, the delegation for LDPs, um, I think Council needs to um, consider the ramifications of that and the delays that that can cause um, applicants in terms of the process around that. Um, just some um, stats um, so you're aware. Welga um, have a performance monitoring system where they look at all planning and building applications um, from councils um, within Western Australia, um, particularly around the, the metro area. Um, out of the total building and planning applications that these are councils within the GAP group, so the Growth Alliance Perth Peel um, number of councils that we belong to. Um, so over the course of a year, that's um, thousands of applications that councils um, receive. Um, we, under delegation, um, officers approve 98% of those. The other um, gap group, um, it's over 99%. So out of all the applications that have been received, this council is actually receiving more reports um, than our other comparable councils within the gap group. Um, the other thing to consider too is just, um, I think the concern is raised around um, the work that's coming through to council. Um, we have done a review of the number of reports at other councils, it's very similar. So there's no difference in terms of the reports that this council is receiving to other councils. Um, it comes down to timing as to when reports are being rep um, prepared. Um, and also we looked at the time of our um, meetings and they're pretty similar to other councils. Bear in mind that um, there's only a few councils that meet fortnightly, most councils meet monthly. Um, what pushes the other council's time of meetings out is that they have a number of public questions um, because they have some other issues within their community, um, but it's all comparable. So I think in terms of the delegation process, we are pretty much in line. And I'd also like to point out too that the delegations that are in place pretty much are in line with what Welga have in their model template. Thank you. So um, we'll deal with the um, the request to have the item. Oh, sorry. Through you, Your Worship. I just wanted to add um, under the current delegations. Just to be clear for all the councillors, the current delegations allow for the LDPs, the local development plans, to be called to council. So there is a mechanism at the moment through the memo that you receive from myself that goes to all councillors when a local development plan is being assessed to provide you with the opportunity to call it into council. Since this has been in place, there has been no call up of local development plans to council. So um, that mechanism, as I said, is, is currently there if you choose to um, trigger that. Thank you. So we'll, if there's nothing further, we'll deal with the initial um, request uh, by Councillor D. Wood to have this item uh, deferred. Um, 
So we've had a mover and a seconder. Um, would you like to speak a bit yes, further? Sure. I think you probably need to um, embellish a little bit more as to why. I've been on the council for 20 years and uh, we used to go through dozens of LDPs. Um, and it, it, um, it, it's disturbing for me to think that the elected representatives have got to ask for something to come up when it should be here all the time anyway. And, and uh, uh, I, I just believe that the, and also the, the meetings that we're having, the only things that are come to, coming to council are the ones that actually legally have to come to council. We're getting over these things. It's, a, it's, it's almost a joke to come in and, and, and have two or three items total when we're, we're getting, like there's um, Coogee Chemicals building ma massive uh, uh, gasoline tanks down there. We have to ask if, if, about that. Well, it did come but, to council. Yeah, well, as I, a well, I was I was away for a, a month or so. But that, well, that, that, that did come to council because it was a JDAP application. Yeah, and yeah. So well, that if was, it's a that JDAP, was dealt. If yeah. it's a JDAP, it's okay. It, it comes to council. But um, we are the elected representatives of this council of this uh, city. Um, I, and I don't believe we're being told enough or are being given enough information to um, to actually do our job properly. Just be very careful if you're trying to put a slur on council uh, officers. So I'm not putting a slur on anybody. I'm just saying the facts. Just, okay, thank you. Okay. CEO, I'd like to respond. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, councillors, I think in terms of the amount of information you get, you receive um, a lot of information to enable you to um, conduct your business and also to ask questions. Um, the director puts out um, very regularly um, all the applications that have been received, all the planning matters um, that are before um, officers. So you're certainly getting a lot of information that a lot of other um, councils do not get. Um, <coughs> The, the other thing too, though, is it, it really does come down to um, how the business is conducted. And as I said, a lot of the stuff is operational in um, nature and the delegations which are in place enables the council to operate um, efficiently and effectively. Um, you recall that um, the Minister for Local Government uh, last year um, conducted a removing red tape um, and efficiency um, and a lot of the stuff that's in place is very much in line with that. So we're very much following um, that process and there has been no change to the delegations for a number of years. Thank you. Um, Councillor S. Wood, as a seconder, do you wish to speak to the item? Not putting words into Councillor Wood's mouth. I think what he, he meant to say, in my opinion, um, was that um, the decisions, we're elected to make the decisions and yet the officers seem to be making the decisions in this case for us, even though we do get the opportunity to um, come back to you and ask the questions and, and have it come forward to, to the council. Well, maybe the so second part, we might be able to deal that, with that as a second part, which was uh, if this one lapses, uh, Councillor Wood has then asked... Um, <coughs> foreshadowed that he wishes all LDPs to come back to council. So then we can deal with that as a two-part. So would anybody like to speak against? Yes, Your Worship. Um, I'm just wondering if there's some confusion over the LDP as opposed to a um, just a, a, a development application, Your Worship, because ultimately a, a LDP, um, and Mrs Cook can correct me if I'm wrong, formerly known as detailed area plan, is around um, land planning. Is that not correct? <coughs> Through you, Your Worship, yeah, our local development plan um, stems from structure planning and subdivision and it, it, it is intended to provide guidance around different elements of design, around lot configuration, uh, driveway access, uh, footpath, orientation of buildings, um, uh, fencing guidance, um, architectural styles, etc. So it's it's getting it's it's around a stage of development as opposed to individual development. That's what an LDP is. Development application obviously is a development proposal around a use or a or, or works associated with an individual site. Um, 
Okay, thank you. That's I guess that's that, that was what I was wanting to clarify because I wasn't sure what whether the council Wood was referring to an LDP really or a development application because they're quite clearly two two separate things. Um, Through your worship, the the other thing to be clear on, if it is around development applications. The planning reform process is going through a model scheme review which will standardise um, very much what are permissible and non-permissible uses, um, uses that need to be advertised, works that need to be advertised and what needs to, um, uh, can, be, can be determined um, efficiently I guess uh, through the offices. So those standards and those zones and those provisions that are used at the moment are currently under review by the city. Um, and that will, and, and as I think we presented in our presentation um, some time ago, that this was a precursor to that. So once we do our review of our scheme, which is a very, very old scheme, and bringing that into line, we can then have another go at any of those changes around the different types of uses that the councillors may be particularly concerned about that you do want to debate or discuss or, or determine in the chamber as opposed to those that um, uh, you're, you're comfortable for, for um, the officers to deal with under delegation. Okay, so um, yeah, so I guess you, 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 what I thought was was right and I guess um, currently obviously the fact that these city officers are um, uh, approving the LDPs is streamlining um, the process of, of developers getting land on on, on, um, on stream. I, I will note that currently within the city of Kunani boundaries you cannot buy a lot of a block of land and it's unlikely you'll be able to buy a block of land within at least the next six months. There is no land available. The land that is has been developed and is close to being developed and close to being developed is all being sold your worship. So. Um, I guess anything council did to slow the process of, of development, I, 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 I wouldn't support. Um, I would, however, uh, support council being provided a little bit more information in relation to development applications. Um, uh, if, and I guess my the examples of this, and I've had this conversation with Mrs Cook before, and I actually think I had this conversation with you, Your Worship. I, I do know that the city advertises development applications on Love My Kornana. Uh, and in some cases, those development applications are advertised there before the council is advised. And in some cases, I think that there's those that are going on Love My Kwanana, council should be advised at the same time because ultimately, if, if the community are being asked to make comment, they contact the council mm -hmm. asking them what's this all about, and that council has no idea. Recently, I had this experience. Woolworths is going in behind, well, there's a de development application going in on Thomas Road. Council was unaware of this. It was on Love My Kwanana. Someone asked me a question. Uh, similarly, there was there's a, a block of land in Sunrise where uh, there is a childcare centre going in there. Once again, council was unaware, but that was advertised. So I guess, if anything, if we can just ensure that council are aware when the community is made aware. And I think to that point, uh, Deputy Mayor, when um, Mr Elkins was this came up also when uh, you were in the big chair, acting CEO, and I think there was going to be some undertakings. Through you, Your Worship, um, we are investigating how we can ad address that trigger. So not all of our development applications that are advertised, as you can appreciate, some of the applications are only notifications to adjoining um, property owners, so those smaller developments, patios or um, sheds, etc. They don't need to go on to Love My Quinana, but those that are do uh, appear on Love My Quinana are broader uh, applications that are more significant that may have a broader, um, uh, I guess, a appeal to um, the community at large. So we want to make sure that it has that reach. The point was previously raised, and and it is agreed that what we're trying to look at is as soon as they're put onto Love My Quinana that you or get an email advising of uh, of the application and that and you have access to that information immediately. We're just working through that at the moment. Okay, thank you. Would somebody like to speak uh, for Councillor Wood's um, recommendation for deferral? If not, do you wish to close Councillor Wood? Okay, thank you. So I'll just be clear, there's no... Um, their recommendation is to defer this item. All in favour? 
against, lost. There was a second part you foreshadowed, Councillor Wood, and that was that you, you sought uh, to have all local development plans come back to council to be dealt with. Do you still wish to proceed with that in light of the discussions? You withdraw it? Thank you. We therefore have the officer's recommendation. Would somebody like to move that way? Move Deputy Mayor. Seconded to Councillor Rouse. Deputy Mayor, do you wish to speak on the item? Councillor Rouse. Anybody wish to speak against? I shall put it to the vote. All in favour? Against. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item uh, 14.2 is the adoption of the Strategic Community Plan and Corporate Business Plan. Hold on, I'll just make sure I've got the right 14.2. Yep. Thank you. We have, um, are there any questions? We have a recommendation. Would somebody like to move that way? Thank you. Moved Councillor um, Winmar, seconded Deputy Mayor. Councillor Winmar, do you wish to speak on the item? Yeah, thank you, Worship. Um, just in relation to the planning and the time and the effort, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the officer's commitment in ensuring that the detail and information is clear and concise um, and that the pillars are clearly outlined so that the members of the community are totally aware of uh, the planning for the City of Kornada and what the future is going to look like. Um, and the way that it's presented is also is uh, very professional in nature and it puts the definitely the council as compared to some other councils in the way that we deliver information more easily accessible for the, the residents of Kwinana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor. Oh, no, you're right. Thank you. Um, would anybody like to speak against? Put it to the vote. All in favour? Against. Carried. And just like to... Um, Thank all the officers for the very professional way in which both these reports have been uh, presented. And that was also duly noted recently by our Audit and Risk uh, Committee. Okay. Item 15, there's nothing. Item 16, sorry, I'll just wait. 16.1 is a, uh, the budget adoption for 2023-2024, noting that there is an amendment uh, to our report to include the Clinny Arts Centre fees and charges, uh, which really just ties in the item that we dealt with in item 10. So, are there any uh, questions on the budget? Thank uh, you, yes, Deputy Just uh, briefly. I just wonder if Mr Fisher could um, disadvise whether the, uh, the fees and charges for Corlini, which I acknowledge have only been added in extremely late, Your Worship, whether they compare to the city's current fees and charges for other community facilities? Through you, um, the Chair, we, we, we haven't done that an analysis and, and, at this sort of point, but, but I think they'll become a part of the review that we'll conduct over the next three months. Thank you. Any questions? We have a recommendation. Would somebody like to move that way? I move Councillor S. Wood, seconded to Councillor Rouse. Councillor Wood, would you like to speak on the item? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Only that um, I'm very um, pleased with how the officers have dealt with this minor crisis. <laughs> thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Rouse. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, <clears throat> while this budget proposes an overall 4.2% increase in total rates revenue, uh, there will be many households having to pay far more than this percentage uh, due to the system by which the state government determines to calculate our rates. Um, so I'll use my own household as an example. Um, I was surprised to see my, my gross rental value, which is determined by Landgate, a state government organisation, has increased by one third. Uh, this valuation was based on my GRV from August 2021. It's short before the sharp rental uh, price rises we've seen over the one, last 1 1.2 years, so uh, I dread to think what my next evaluation will be when it kicks in. Um, 
But however, due to the lower rate in the dollar being proposed this year, my total base rate increase will be 10.45%, or in dollar terms, an increase in $184. Um, that combined with a 41 increase in the waste levy, an increase in pool inspection fees, an increase in the emergency services levy will see my household paying an overall extra $251. Uh, or in dollar terms, that's, uh, or in a percentage term, that's 10.5% on top of what I paid last year. Um, this, I believe, uh, most would agree is a significant increase for some households and uh, who are faced with similar increase and uh, in, to their GV and they will struggle, and I do sympathise with those affected. However, when setting rates, councillors need to be mindful of the financial sustainability of the future of the city and take a pragmatic approach. If rates are not increased, services and projects will need to be cut. And it is clear from the city's consultation with residents, we're developing a strategic community plan that would, that would be an unacceptable outcome for our community. I am confident through our many briefings that the CEO and city officers have done their utmost to keep this overall rate increase to the bare minimum, while still maintaining our city assets and a level of service that is factory to our residents. We all know the cost of living have substantially increased and the cost to run local government has done likewise. Raising rates is not a decision elected members take lightly. We know the backlash we will receive from some in our community. At this and this being an election year, there will no doubt be the usual outcry of vote out those councillors that voted to increase rates. But councillors are elected ultimately to provide good governance to the city and to govern, you sometimes have to make unpopular de decisions for the good of the overall community now and for the future. If we didn't, it would cost ratepayers more in the long run, and I would challenge any potential candidate in the upcoming election before running on a platform of no rate increases to tell us all how they would maintain the services and assets we do and plan and budget for the future of the City of Cronulla without increasing rates. I urge members of our community to read the budget report contained in this agenda and study the costs involved with running the city to truly see why this decision needs to be made. So I therefore support the motion, Your Worship. Thank you, and well said, Councillor Rouse. May I wish? clarify my former comment? Oh, yes, I, <laughs> I was actually might. alluding to the um, addition of in the budget of the fees and charges for Colini, which is, was the last minute um, effort that, that for our councillors. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything though you, that you would like to say, though? Is there anything further you'd like to um, say as the original I'm mover? Just, just um, really impressed with the amount of work that the, the um, officers have put into the budget and um, that we've come out with a balanced budget and a, and a very carefully thought out budget. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak against? I shall put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. And I'd just like to say a, a few comments as well. Um, I'd like to thank the CEO, executive and staff who've worked tirelessly with the elected members over numerous workshops to present a balanced budget and a budget uh, which would deliver a number of key community outcomes in what has been really a challenging fiscal environment and shall continue to be a challenging fiscal environment. I would like to uh, single out in particular our Chief Financial Officer. Thank you very much for all your, your hard work and your direction. You've, I think uh, the way you have been able to present at the budget workshops have made uh, the councillors' um, life a little bit easier because budgets are not an easy beast. Um, but the City of uh, Kwinana's 2023-24 budget focuses on meeting the community's vision for Kwinana and its expectations for quality service while managing the complex needs and challenges associated with the City's expansive and fast pace growth. We continue to be a fast growing council in 2023 and welcome that population increase. Um, but it has of course that comes, what comes with growth comes challenges and that's trying to ensure services and infrastructure supports our community. Uh, the latest census estimates that the city's population actually reached the milestone of 50,000 uh, during the 22-23 financial year. Um, the city once again endeavours to take a conserve approach as we did try to, to keep it to 3.9% um, and we looked at our financial year basing on, on our long-term financial plan which was adopted in December 2021. However, as alluded by uh, Councillor Rouse, we all know that inflation and the rising cost of living impacts everybody including local governments and let's face it, we're all ratepayers here. 
uh, so we do we are quite invested in this as well. Unfortunately, the forecast in the long-term financial plan were lower than the current level inflation in 2023, with the consumer price index for the last quarter at 7.8%, and the local government costs, which reflect a range of costs that council face, such as construction, electricity, and materials, was forecast at 4.5%. And of course, with a number of the city's major contracts subjected to these increases, these have all contributed to the financial pressures Council are facing. Additionally, there has been a 5% increase to the emergency <coughs> services levy, which is set by the state government and collected through the rates, um, at seven point, and a 7.5% increase to street lighting tariff set by Western Power. That was certainly challenging, and if it wasn't for all the councillors coming together as a united front, uh, that Western Power tariff would have been a lot higher. So this year is also a revaluation year, uh, re-evaluation in which Landgate undertakes a gross rental value assessment of all properties in the city of Kunana, which is then used to help rate calculations. The differential rating category also forms part of this complex equation for determining the rates payable for each individual property. And probably the best way you can explain is we've got a great video uh, info document um, on our social media that's the best way you can actually explain it because it is rather complex. Um, the City of Kunana is in its final year of rate harmonisation. You might recall it, um, that started back in 2018. I think we had about 23 rating categories and we finally brought them down to, to six so that there's a lot more equity across, um, across the, the community. Um, the, this process of streamlining was conducted over several years in an effort to reduce financial burden property owners could experience in any one year. Six submissions were received as part of the statutory advertising uh, period for our proposed residential um, differential uh, rates. Um, however, city officers reviewed the rate increase in light of the Western Power and announcement to increase street lighting tariff by 7.5% which equates to 105,000 that must now be incorporated into our budget and hence it translated to a 0.25% increase on top of our advertised 3.95% average increase on the differential rates and we landed at 4.2%. Uh, so at a special council meeting on the 26th of April, council supported this average increase to incorporate the Western Power Street tariffs um, just like to look at some of the projects uh, quickly that we have, and these are only a few of the um, projects that we have uh, coming. Um, we've got significant urban tree planting. We are the city of trees, and we really um, jealously like to make sure that we maintain that mantle. Uh, we have enhancement to our CCTV network, and that is because safety is one of those priorities our community has told us that they, um, they value very highly. We've still got the Kunana Loop Trail improvements. Uh, we've got the construction of the Wellard West uh, Community Centre Club Rooms. We've got quite a lot of significant maintenance to undertake on our award-winning Kunana Adventure Park. We're also going to finish the car parks at Pace Road and Smirks Cottage. We've got the new toilets at Challenger Beach to replace and we've got a youth pump track in Wandi being built. So there's just a few of those initiatives and I know that um, many of us hear the catch cry of, you know, what do we get for our rates? If uh, we might be able to, when we see that on social media, um, jump in quickly and put a link, because there is a link uh, on our webpage that shows everything that people do get for their rates. And I think those who do look through the list will be quite surprised. So, look, thank you once again, officers. Thank you, councillors. Um, and therefore, obviously, we support... Um, the budget we've just been moved, it's just been moved. Now we go on to item 17.1, our three bin curbside waste feasibility um, assessment. Another big item. Okay. So um, are there any questions? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. For the people uh, viewing at home, you are here. I uh, wonder if the uh, city officers could uh, give us a, uh, I don't know, a two-minute presentation on what exactly this means for the community, Your Worship. A good to go. Thank you. It just so happens. Oh, something we prepared earlier? Uh, I don't have a presentation, <laughs> but I will provide you with... I'm not sure if it'll be a two-minute summary. 
Um, this is quite a significant piece of work um, that has been prepared by um, our environment uh, team, um, specifically focusing on a particular action that's listed on our waste plan to respond to the state's waste strategy, which, um, as the council would be aware, um, included um, the requirement for transitioning all Perth and Peel local governments um, to a three-bin FOGO service by 2025. Um, we undertook, as per our adopted waste plan, to undertake a feasibility study to determine exactly what um, uh, that service might look like going into um, the next, you know, five to ten years. Um, the options were clear. You either stay as you are as a two-bin service with waste to energy, go to a three-bin service which is uh, a three-bin service that includes garden organics or a three-bin service that includes uh, food organics and garden organics option. So the, the, the assessment was undertaken through quite a, a rigorous process um, using a multi-criteria analysis as we've done previously, but this was a, a little bit more comprehensive than the last one, um, and took on board a whole range of other uh, documents that were prepared by the Waste Authority uh, and through other consultancies and the Rivers Regional Council to help inform um, uh, the process. We also um, undertook to consult with our community around their um, uh, options and, and considerations around uh, the service that they're looking for into the future. So as summarised in the report, um, the, 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 the assessment went through a whole range of criteria that looked at social, economic, environmental and governance um, considerations. And the recommendation um, is for a three-bin go system to be implemented by the city, um, commencing in um, July 2024. Um, the reason for this uh, service as the preferred recommendation was um, basically it ticked a number of the boxes whilst it won't necessarily uh, achieve the waste strategy objectives that the state government is looking for, it's certainly on the pathway towards it. It also provides a value for money option for the community who are um, overwhelmingly uh, progressing towards that three bin service being provided locally. Um, the uh, result from a three bin go system would be a 14% increase in material recovery. Um, and uh, resulting in a, um, a average annual cost of uh, 0.8 million, 0.8 million. Yeah, that's right, 800,000. Um, so, in looking at the the three options, the third option of the Fogo system was also explored. But again, the value for money proposition in terms of material recovery, in terms of emissions, in terms of um, the the actual cost what just didn't stack up in terms of the feasibility um, and go uh, was was outlined as the preferred option. Thank you very much. Um, are there any further questions? If not, we have a recommendation. Thank you, Worship. No, I was just wondering, um, did the uh, city consider the, uh, the cost implications for providing a 240 residual waste bin as opposed to the uh, the 140 litre waste bin? You mean the red top one? Yeah. Yeah, municipal, yeah. And do we know what the difference in cost would be to provide a... There was a whole number of, I guess, variations um, considered to, to looking at the cost implications of the various options at with all the the two bin, three bin, FOGO and three bin GO, and really the, the cost differential wasn't great. Just to follow up, because I'm just looking at those uh, rollout costs and um, on the confidential um, item attached, so I don't know if we want to go behind closed doors just to, uh, to speak to those figures. Um, I think we would have to go behind closed mm. doors. It is, it is quite an important item, so if you're proposing I'll move that... i that we go behind closed doors. Okay, thank you. Uh, moved Councillor Rouse, seconded Deputy Mayor, all in favour, <coughs> against. Sorry for any members of the public, we just might have to ask you to step outside for a short period of time. Um, 
I'm sure Mr Morley has... Uh, well... No, he can stay. <laughs> Oh, right. Won't be long. I was actually thinking that too, because when I walk around, there are so many people still put so much in their wood tops, which will be the wood tops in. But that's part of the education.
Councillor. Um, Um, Councillor Eswood, you had a question of Mr Morley. It was just about the, the green bins. I have a quite a large block um, with several very big trees in my back garden and 20-odd uh, rose bushes. I often have to prune things back and um, I find it very hard to fit it all into the green bin as it is, even though it has the uh, other protrusible rubbish in there as well. Um, and my neighbour often lets me put it into her bin. She lives by herself as a pensioner. So I'm going to find it very hard if it's picked up once a fortnight. Mm. Yep, okay. Uh, so that's within your general waste bin at the moment, I presume? Yeah. Yes, okay. So with, with the uh, introduction of the third go bin, it will actually in increase your weekly, your average weekly capacity by about 20 litres. So the amount that goes in your, bin, in your general waste bin at the moment, shifting over to your garden waste bin, may come close to accommodating uh, that from what, what you're saying. Uh, but there's nothing stopping you also continuing to put that in, in the general waste bin. We obviously prefer it in the, in the garden organics uh, bin so that it is recovered. But you can use your overall general waste and garden waste capacity to, to meet your needs. Might also just point out... A, Yes, yeah. Um, might also point out as well that the city does provide uh, the Verge Collection Service as well. Um, so at, at present we provide three of those collections per annum, which allows you three cubic metres of green waste collection for each. That's the other thing I was going to mention, was the, um, the, the timing of the pickups, because um, you pick up the green waste about a month or six weeks before it's rose pruning time. <laughs> so it's all about your rose pruning, Councillor Wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And look, I think it's like it's not one one sh one lid fits all. You know, there's going to be everybody's going to have. You know, there's no perfect solution. Um, yeah, no. Are there any other questions? We do have a recommendation. Would somebody like to move that way? Oh, thank you. Uh, moved, Councillor S. Wood. Second, Councillor D. Wood. Uh, Councillor Eswood, would you like to speak on the item? It just makes perfect sense and, and a, a lot of the other um, councils uh, have already headed that way and are working very well with it and I think going with the FOGO, is it FOGO? I go, get them muddled yeah. up. <laughs> FOGO um, is, is the way to go because it's a, um, a more cost effective for our community as well. Now just you. clarify, we're good to go. We're go, not FOGO. <laughs> I can, and, and that hence we're going to have quite a detailed education process because it is quite confusing. Thank you, Councillor uh, D. Wood. Okay, thank you. Anybody wish to speak against the item? I shall put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Uh, so carried. But I would really like to reiterate um, and really thank, thank the staff. Uh, this has been a very challenging journey. Uh, especially with the state uh, waste strategy and the fact that we've already, like many councils, signed up to waste energy and there's a lot of goalposts of change during this journey. But nonetheless, we have gone out and we have um, canvassed the community on what, what they want as well. We know that this is the way we are required to go and that we'll have waste to energy hopefully by 2025 as well. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> no. So, um, so thank you very much for your efforts in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item. We have item 8.1, which is our Joint Development Assessment Panel, uh, addition to our General Industry Waste Storage Tanks, which Councillor um, Rouse and I have declared an impartiality interest on. Are there any questions of the officers? If not, we have a recommendation. Thank you. Um, moved Deputy Mayor, seconded Councillor Winmar. Do any councillors wish to speak on this item? Anybody wish to speak against? Should put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Item 19.1 is the City of Cornwall Sustainable Framework or Sustainability Framework. Um, are there any questions on this document or, or the recommendation? 
Thank you. We have we do have a recommendation. Would somebody like to move that way? Moved Councillor Kearney. Seconded uh, Councillor Wood. Uh, Councillor Kearney, do you wish to speak on the item? Uh, Councillor Wood. I'd just like to highlight that uh, it's already in um, the the agenda, that um, but I thought I'd highlight it. But um, we're the first strategic document of its kind for any local government in WA. Thank you. And um, we've all been part of this journey through GHD and their uh, consultation with community and with um, with the elected members as well. So thank you. Anybody wish to speak against? Put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. 19.2 are accounts for payment for month ending 31 May 2023. Any questions on those accounts? If not, we have a recommendation. Somebody would like to move that way. Moved Councillor Rouse. Seconded to Councillor Brown. Either councillors? Anybody wish to speak against? I shall put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. 19.3, uh, services over Christmas and New Year period. Roll on summer on those cold, these cold mornings. Uh, any questions of <coughs> council officers? If not, we have a recommendation. Would somebody like to move that way? Okay. Move Deputy Mayor, seconded Councillor S. Wood. Deputy Mayor, wish to speak? Thank you, Councillor S. Wood. Anybody wish to speak against? Put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. Item 19.4 is the unconfirmed minutes of the Audit and Risk Committee meeting held on the 19th of June 2023. Are there any questions on any of those minutes from our Audit and Risk Committee? If not, we have a recommendation. Moved Councillor Winmar, uh, seconded to Councillor Wood. Councillor Winmar, do you wish to speak on the item? No. Councillor Wood? Anybody wish to speak against? Put it to the vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. <coughs> there is nothing on items 20, 21, 22 we've dealt with. Item 23, reports of the elected members. Um, Deputy Mayor. Just briefly, Your Worship. Uh, I attended uh, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. I need to remember the awareness, Your Worship, uh, which was <laughs> an uh, initiative held at the, um, in the Carol Adams Lounge, Your Worship. Um, and uh, the uh, group of seniors from Savvy Seniors, Manda Stall, as well as uh, a number of other community groups. Uh, I attended Cuppa with a Cop in, uh, at Sloan's Reserve, which was surprisingly well attended considering the weather, Your Worship. Um, and uh, I would actually just like to mention the, um, the little pop-up program that there is in Leader at the moment and they have a, um, the city's running a program called Love My Leader and Love My Street which has been fairly successful. The very first street they did, uh, everyone in the street kind of came out and were engaged uh, and lots of those people from that street within Leader uh, came along to Couple With A Cop uh, and for those people viewing at home, if you live in Leader and like your street to be loved, um, there's a link on the Love My Kwanana website, Your Worship. Uh, I attended the audit committee, I attended the Lyric Awards, as everyone else will. Uh, I would like to congratulate Belle Cardew for being named Young Person of the Year. Uh, I attended the opening of NADOC, which Councillor Winmar was the MC, Your Worship. Uh, and I also attended the Senior Citizens uh, Monthly Meeting, which was the first meeting of the new committee, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Winmar. Yeah, thank you, Worship. I uh, attended the uh, Audit and Risk Committee meeting on the Monday the 19th and also attended the Gilmore College Board. Um, I would just like to um, acknowledge that uh, the official NAIDOC Day festivities um, across Australia, uh, Sunday the 2nd of July to Saturday the 8th. And I'd just like to note that uh, um, the theme for this year is for our elders. Um, and just to let the community know that in Kwinana, we actually celebrate it the week before to give the Aboriginal community the opportunity to showcase the richness of the culture and presenting that to the broader community. Um, and we take that with pride and this year it was our privilege from the Institute of Indigenous Wellbeing and Sport to be the, to host that event um, to open the week for uh, the city of Kwinana. 
and, and it's also an opportunity to continue the, the good work working with the City of Kunana and the broader community around um, fostering and developing and letting the rest of the communities know how inclusive and diverse Kunana is and how rich our culture and history goes, uh, especially with the growth in our area from the called community um, and other diversity groups through our citizenship ceremonies, which is forever growing in numbers. Um, so we've still got some events to go f to finish this week off. We had the opening ceremony on Monday. Um, there was a, other, a, a Murich Kulingas event on Tuesday. I had the uh, privilege today to uh, attend the Nala Yorga Wankan uh, Elders Luncheon, which was held at the bowling club. Um, um, it went off well. The, uh, there was a, it was well attended. Um, the elders uh, wanted to acknowledge um, their, their standing in community and also the struggles that they've done and also include elders of all uh, generations and all communities uh, in Kwinana for the services they've done in ensuring that they pass down the knowledge to the younger generation so that they can care for this country and look forward and moving forward, continuing um, the inclusiveness in which Kwinana stands for. I know that um, in other circles uh, in around other communities that uh, we are a progressive community in how we look at including everybody in community um, and that was also highlighted through the facilities for the rest of this week. I also attended the South Metro Zone meeting um, which was held in the, at the city of um, East Romano, um, and all those other duties which were responsible uh, undertaken as well this week, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Winmar. Uh, Councillor D Wood. I performed all those duties required of me, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rouse. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, on Tuesday the 20th of June, I chaired the Local Emergency Management Committee meeting. Um, we held this meeting at 11 o'clock um, for the first time. Um, normally held at four, so the agencies had a better representation there. Um, and that was well received time-wise, and I'm pleased to report uh, that there was no significant reports from any of the agencies in attendance. Um, sounds a sounds a strange thing to say when I'm pleased that there's no significant reports, but um, that's from a management uh, from an emergency uh, point of view, Your Worship. Um, on Tuesday the 20th, I, uh, along with the other councillors, attended the Lyric Awards, and I'm pretty sure uh, Councillor Brown will speak more to this. Um, but I would like to congratulate all nominees and, and category winners for their individual and uh, group uh, nominations and achievements. Um, but I would like to make special mention of our Lyric Young Person of the Year, um, Annabelle Card -Yu. Um I've had the pleasure of knowing Annabelle uh, for many years. She uh, attends school with my daughter since kindy. Um, she's uh, this year's uh, first year on the YAC. Um, she's an ac active volunteer within our community um, and uh, especially a member of the, as part of a membership of the Willow Village Town Team. Um, she's an outstanding student at PCAX and uh, she's a valuable member of the under-16 Sapphires Peter Carnley basketball team, which I coach. Um, so she puts her heart and soul um, into all of her endeavours and um, just watching her uh, development and, and her growing in confidence over these uh, past few years has been an absolute joy to witness. So um, along with her and, um, and all the uh, other nominees and winners, um, I'd just like to congratulate them, and, and a lot of people give our youth in Quinana a hard time, but the, these uh, youth that were represented there last Tuesday night are really the future of our community, and uh, we should be proud of each and every one of them. So, And on Tuesday, the 27th of June, I attended the Jade Up and Along, with, along with yourself, Your Worship, uh, to consider the uh, proposed childcare centre on Brilliant Boulevard in Mandoglup, Mandoglup, which was uh, unanimously approved by the panel. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Your Worship. So since our last Ordinary Council meeting, I attended the 2023 Lyric Awards alongside other councillors, city staff and community members, where I was also pleased to announce the Community Inspiration Award up on stage. Off the back of the competitive nomination and judging process, it was really awesome to see the incredible efforts of so many of our younger residents on show throughout the evening, including those who went through the city's inaugural mentoring program where younger residents were paired up with adult professionals who were able to share their knowledge and experiences working in the career or field that the younger residents aspired to get into themselves. I wish, wish to say a huge congratulations to those who took part in the Lyric Mentoring Program and to those who were nominated, and if they were really lucky, won awards throughout the evening. 
Walking away from that evening, uh, you couldn't help but feel a huge amount of pride in what our younger residents are doing in the city of Quinana and beyond. It's probably a not so well kept secret that our city and our residents are making waves at a state, national and international level. And I have no doubt that the young people in the room last Tuesday evening are 100% picking up that mantle and continuing that trend when it comes to demonstrating innovation, leadership, and even overcoming personal challenges to the benefit of not only themselves, but the community around them. Well done, and I can't wait to see the Lyric Awards and the range of Lyric initiatives continue to thrive into the future. Uh, since our last Ordinary Council meeting, it was also a real treat to take part in two of the city's community planting days over the past couple of weeks. The first in bushland surrounding Thomas Oval, where volunteers planted 550 trees and plants, and the second in bushland surrounding Homestead Park, where we planted 570 trees and plants. The trees and plants were selected based on naturally occurring species in the area, and the recyclable plastic guards that you see dotted around the area are designed to protect them from animals during their early stages of life. A big thanks to our volunteers and city staff for the absolutely awesome effort and for making it such a fun and welcoming event for all ages. Uh, you may have heard the phrase, many, ma many hands make light work, and the city's community planting days are a great example of that, where I've seen firsthand how a couple of hours of volunteering really leaves a huge impact on the environment and city landscapes that will be felt for many years into the future. And lastly, I'm a little bit different, but <laughs> last Saturday evening, I took on the volunteer role of official scorer at the Quinana Bowling Club's annual quiz night fundraiser. You're working it hard. <laughs> A really great evening of competition over drinks and snacks, which saw a close run of scores till the very end, making that the announcement of our winners at the end even more exciting. Uh, so many community groups, families, and groups of friends were represented on the night, and I was told that this was the biggest turnout they had seen with all areas of the function space covered with the participants. Uh, big kudos to everyone involved in organizing this event in support of one of the city's pioneer institutions, which has been bringing together local residents for so many years. It was also fantastic to see a number of city teams represented who used the evening as an opportunity for team building and to have some fun. Well done. Thank you. I performed all those duties required of me and along with Councillor Winmar and Mr Doug Elkins attended the South Metro Zone meeting. Um, and that's basically all I've managed to do over the last couple of weeks besides attending the ordinary meetings that we need to come to the committee meetings. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Kearney. Um, no, I've got nothing to report, only that um, Val Kaju was planning to be a, a mayor down the track. Good on her. Future mayor. <laughs> That's all right. I know they're all lining up behind yeah. me like a Congo Can line. I, future mayor? <laughs> Can I just add that I'm looking forward to going to the family day tomorrow morning down at Apex Park for the NAIDOC week and I encourage others to join us. Great. Thank you very much. Um, there's no, uh, there's nothing on item 24, item 25, mayoral announcements. Everybody's basically covered most, but I'd just like to welcome back our CEO who's been away um, studying hard for, what, about 20, uh, what, five weeks or more? Three and a half. Three and a half, so we look forward to hearing about your learnings at Harvard and also like to thank Mr Elkins who's done a wonderful job um, in your absence as our acting CEO, but it's really great to have the team all back again. So it's great. Um, just looking through my notes, anything? No, I've, I've really just been to many of the events that everybody else have been. I actually did um, uh, put all the names of the winners of the leadership, the various awards uh, for our um, lyric, and as well as that. Uh, for the importance of um, the elders of our NAIDOC week. So um, a bit further down, I've just written out part of my speech, um, which really kind of encapsulates what the theme is really about. Uh, and last night I, I attended probably with about 100 other um, local, state, federal government persons and business leaders to celebrate the 247th anniversary independence of the United States of America, which was hosted by our consular Siri Nairn. Um, and it was, a, it was a really lovely event held at Kings Park. Um, there was, uh, we even had former premiers there and even Mr. Kim Beasley and the governor, and it was a very lovely event. So look, um, I'd just like to, um, just again, thank everybody. It's, it's coming towards the end of financial year on Friday. We've had a massive agenda, and whilst we've dealt with it in an hour and 15 minutes, um, there has been so much work that has gone into getting us to where we are. Not only have we passed the budget, 
but the fo uh, the um, the waste strategy and to the good for go uh, has just taken such a lot out of time and effort out of the staff and uh, elected members through various workshops. We've got our strategic community plan, our corporate business plan, huge documents, lots lots of work, and it really, um, you know, anyone in the community can pick up those documents and see who we are, what we stand for, what our vision is, and when we where we wish to go. Uh, so thank you all very much um, uh, for being part of that. Thank you all for your attendance, and I declare the meeting closed at 6:45. Thank you. <laughs>